Over the last couple of videos, we have been studying the X-bar theory of syntax. In this video, we'll add another piece into the mix, specifiers. And with them, we'll be able to draw a complete tree for a sentence of English. So let's review a little bit of what we have studied. We, for each sentence, we have phrases. For example, the noun phrase pizza. This is a noun phrase because its main word or its head is a noun the noun pizza, which is a word for a thing. So each phrase has a head, and the type of head determines the type of phrase. The head of the phrase pizza is a noun, so this will be a noun phrase. We studied heads and we also studied complements, which are additional pieces of meaning that are necessary for the head to make sense, to be a complete phrase. For example, if you have a prepositional phrase like to Boston, the head is the preposition to. But that head cannot stand on its own. You cannot say to and have it be a complete phrase of English. You always need to say where you, you're going to. You're going to Boston. So this additional bit of information that is needed to complete the meaning is called complement. We can have another bit of meaning, another kind of phrase, which is called an adjunct. Adjuncts add meaning, but they are not necessary for the phrase to function as a whole. For example, in the phrase loved pizza intensely, we can say loved pizza as a phrase on its own. We do not need the adjunct. However, the adjunct adds an additional bit of information that helps refine the meaning. So in the phrase loved pizza intensely, the head is loved because this phrase is about loving something. The complement is pizza because this is the direct object of the transitive verb loved. And intensely is an adverb, which is, functions as an adjunct. Um, finally, we looked at how ad, uh, complements are usually to the right of the head. So in to Boston, we have the head first and then the complement in English. Uh, in this phrase, we have the head first and the complement second in English. The adjunct in English can be either before or after the head. So here intensely is after the head and here delicious dinner comes before the head. So we have studied several kinds of lexical heads, for example, noun phrases, um, nouns, which are the heads of noun phrases, verbs, heads of verb phrases, adjectives, heads of adjective phrases, adverbs, heads of adverb verbial phrases. We have also studied several kinds of functional heads, for example, prepositions, which are the heads of prepositional phrases and determiners like the, ah, uh, my, this, which are the heads of determiner phrases. Lexical categories, by the way, are all open categories and that you can easily create new nouns and new verbs and we do it all the time. Functional categories are closed categories. You can't easily make new prepositions for English. You, this happens very sporadically. Um, one that has been created recently is because as a preposition like in I do this because pizza. But you, it's very difficult to create new prepositions and new determiners. Only, new determiners only happens every couple hundreds, hundreds of years, whereas you can create nouns every day. So we have studied all of these types of heads and of phrases. Let's suppose a new type of phrase. We're going to call it IP or inflectional phrase. An inflectional phrase can, uh, can be a phrase where the head is an auxiliary, where it's like do don't, did, can, or will. So those would be the heads of the inflection, Pre precisely because they carry inflectional information. They carry information about tense, aspect, mood, and so forth. You can also have features as the head of the inflectional phrase. For example, if a verb is walks, its inflection is in the present tense. If a verb is walked, its inflection is in the past tense. So these features could also be in the head of an inflectional phrase. By the way, um, in some books you'll see this as an inflectional phrase, in some books you'll see this as a TP, as a tense phrase. I'm going to use the more general term IP, 
but in English, TP and IP are virtually identical. So if you read a book that has TP, this is exactly the same as IP in English. All right, so an inflectional phrase is one that has a head, the, as its head, an inflectional word like will, because this indicates the future tense. It has an X bar, and onto that X bar, we will have as a complement a verb phrase. So this inflectional phrase has will as its head, and then as its complement, eat pizza. This is the complement because this is what helps the word will make sense. You can't just say will. You need a complement for it to be a complete phrase. Will eat pizza. Notice that these two now form a set that has a verb, a direct object, and inflectional information. So information about the tense of the verb, for example. If the, there's no word that has an inflection like will or can or did, you need to use a feature to indicate the inflection. For example, the verb eats is in the present tense. So the head of the inflection is going to be plus present tense. Present, and then for the inflectional information to make sense, it needs a verb and a direct object. It needs eats pizza. It can also just be a verb like swims. Let's add one final bit. We're going to specify another kind of element called the specifier. The specifier is going to be another daughter of the initial node, the one that is XP. It is going to be a daughter of the XP node and is going to be a sister of whichever is the first X bar. The specifier is where we will place the subject of sentences. So the subject of the sentence, Anna eats pizza, is the noun phrase, Anna. So now we have all the elements for this tree. This is, an, this is a phrase for an inflected verb which is inflected in the present, where the subject is in the specifier position, and it's Anna. And the present inflection is for the verb eats. And eats has a direct object as a complement, which is the noun pizza. This is what all of this structure means. With what we saw before, let's try to practice. Please try to Draw the trees for the following sentences. John swims. John wanted a donut. John will eat pizza tomorrow. Go back and forth in the video. Copy the previous trees. Study them. And then try to draw the, the trees for these. Remember, the subject goes in the spec position of IP. So it is a direct daughter of IP. And um, inflectional information like the present tense or auxiliaries go in the head of the inflection. Please pause the video. Let's check him out. So John swims is an inflected phrase that is inflected in the present tense. The subject of the phrase is the spec of IP, the noun phrase John. And the inflected phrase has a verb, which is swims. This is intransitive. So it does not need a direct object. You don't swim something, you just swim. For the second one, John wanted a donut, we have a phrase that is inflected in the past tense. The subject of the phrase is the noun phrase John. And the inflection for the past tense is for the verb wanted. Wanted is a transitive verb, so it needs a direct object as its complement. The direct object is the determiner phrase, a donut. Finally, number three, we have a phrase that's inflected for the future, will, with the head will. Its subject is in the spec position of IP, the noun phrase John. And the future inflection, will, has as its verb, eat. So the head of the verbal phrase is eat, and the, that head is inflected for the future tense. You have two um, X bar levels, one for the complement of what you eat, pizza, and one for an adjunct, which is additional information of when you're eating the pizza, 
tomorrow. We did it. We we draw we we drew the tree for a whole phrase. We can use inflectional phrases to have sentences with verbs and their inflection information, and to put the subjects with the sen uh, with the verbs, and then to have a complete sentence. 